Hello, and welcome to Stocks on Under. Today, we're joined by Mohamed Sabri, the founder and CTO of EMAS. Hello, Mohamed. Hi, Mark. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, you announced uh, some a new development on the drone side of things for, for XDOT, which is really, really interesting. Um, and you guys are moving really fast with that. But um, let's take one step back before we jump into that. Can you talk to us through who EMAS is and what you guys do for people that don't know the company that well? Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mark, for the interview. Um, so just to recap, EMAS is short for Embedded AI Systems. We are a fabulous edge AI semiconductor device. What does that mean is that we design and create a chip that is extremely low in power, but very efficient in running AI applications where it's going to be needed, very close to where the sensors is. The big premise here is that instead of like taking your data or doing things, communicating with a cloud, Bring the AI over there and getting the data back. No, I'm going to bring the AI to where the data is being generated. And that allows you to have a faster reaction, a quicker response, and even more privacy in this. Not just that, it actually unlocks the potential for newer applications that was not possible, right, thanks to this kind of technology. So we're now looking into how can we make this not just creating the chip, right? the chip is one piece of the puzzle, but taking it all the way to the application domain. So say where applications we can unlock new frontiers, right? In, in terms of efficiency, new functionalities, new capabilities, and so on. And that has a lot of applications, right? I mean, in terms of like I mean, wearables, in terms of IoT, drones, et cetera, et cetera. And as we will talk about it later, I will shed some of the insights on that front. Right. So you just announced a, a next step in in drones. So a, so X dot for drones. Uh, not too long ago, um, you announced the first sort of phase of that. Now already, in within a very short period of time, you uh, you you announced the results of the second phase. But maybe sort of dive into that a little bit. What has changed since just a couple of months ago? Um, because that's that's really interesting. And and it's sort of what I'm surprised by is the pace of you know of the development that you're going through. It's really fast. Well. I mean, let's take a step back, right? I mean, what are we trying to do in the drones, right? So we um, we looked into the drone industry and we find that if you ask all of most of the stakeholders, they will tell you one main thing, that most of the energy, right, is being consumed by the battery is not in the electronic components, majority is in the mechanical components. So if I even have a magic solution that can does magic AI, right, with zero energy, I'm gonna cause a dent in the kind of energy that's being consumed there. So there's still a big fish, right, to fry in there. So we, what we wanted to do is that can AI or X dot with AI can help in um, alleviate this issue, right, and save some energy in that. So we looked into how can we use the AI to do some sort of dynamic control to enhance what we call the flight time, which is a fl which is synonymous with flight endurance. Basically, what we say that you have a, one battery, can we use the same charge to cover a wider range, right, in flights, right, as as opposed to the baseline. So we went ahead and did initial analysis, just like setting up the infrastructure to do the analysis and get the basic AI running. And that when we had the preliminary results, we found that it's 33%. But we wanted to say that, okay, maybe this is like when I was a lucky hunch, or that's like maybe like a shot in the dark and we got lucky. So we wanted to really expand this results, both in the quantity and the quality. So we went ahead and instead of doing one flight or like a couple of flights, we went ahead and did 300 plus simulation runs, right up to 1000. We didn't do just with one drone, we did it on different drone types from quadcopters, hexacopters and octocopters. So to really cover right what could be flying in the sky using this kind of machinery and with different flying conditions or trying to go with different mission like with different uh, maneuvers and so on and what we wanted to see that can we make the ai more robust to this and can we show consistent improvements in the results on that case so the results show is actually really impressive and we found that as i mean this is a natural thing there's a lot of natural causes to it you'll see some sort of distribution of the benefits there but on average right, you would get around 55 to 60, even 65% improvement, right, on the range that you're going with. So let's say, I mean, like if you were doing that, this means that if you're taking a flight, right, like taking one, the drone is flying for one hour, not hovering, but flying, covering a distance in one hour. Now we're talking about more than one hour and a half, 
right, with the same charge, covering a much wider distance. And we've seen even sometimes can go even all the way to 80%, but this one, like I mean, having like I mean, some uh, idealistic cases where the weather is very nice, there's not much issues in, in wind, and the, the payload is very light on that case. So the, get, the results that we have right now really solidifies our initial findings and even establishes that this is not just was like a one a uh, lucky result, but actually this is consistent. And as the AI we keep keep training and improving on itself, we might expect better and better robustness in the gains that we see. Right. Okay. And so obviously the idea is to get these chips into the market to commercialize. So before that happens, what what's the next step for for this particular application area in terms of validating it with with a, a actual drone companies? Yeah. So, yeah, very, very good question, Mark. I mean, I said we are a fabulous semiconductor. We're not a drone company. So, I mean, we're not going to develop our own drones. So, just let's I mean, establish that. So, now we have this new piece of technology, right? We want to really push ahead and put it in actual drone flights so that people can see it actually uh, working. So, we're now engaging with OEMs, right, to try to port this technology. And given that right now it's running on the chip, but it's, it's connected to some sort of a, an environment, we want to take it an actual drone so we're going and explore all the possible right uh, connections that we have to really get a puc right and then from that we can try to productize or embed our chip into the next generation of these energy efficient drones right we're trying now to establish a new thing that take if i mean endurance can come from electronic components, right? As opposed to just improving the mechanical components alone. And that would help OEMs even to push the drones and accelerate their um, adoption in the market at a wider range. So at the moment right now, for this particular application, we're now taking it to the next step. One is for the, from the commercial front, we're trying to get with OEMs to, to get with PUC co-development, hopefully going after for commercialization. At the technology front, right, we're going ahead and file these technology for a patent, right, because we find that these findings are very unique and it comes from not just the AI piece, not just from the X top piece, but even when getting them together, right, that would, that managed to get this saving. So we have to file this technology to protect our technological advantage, right, and uh, make sure that, I mean, it's not easily replicated uh, somewhere else. Right. Okay. And so, if you look at the improvement of basically you know, better battery life of sixty percent, you know, just to dumb it down a little bit, uh, that's massive, right? Just by including your your solution to this, so that would mean that for other sort of edge devices or or even not non edge devices, but in in general, there's a massive uh, benefit to be had by implementing your your product so if you look at the markets and look at different verticals where else do you think this does this has a you know, application or utility so to speak absolutely yeah. so it's so been so Mark, we said that within 60 percent is massive that's in the drone community and that's in the drone domain that's really amazing right but our chip or our technology provide much higher gains in other domains Right, we'll talk about orders of magnitude, not 60% or not 20%, we'll talk about 20x. And that's in the fields where like electronic components are the predominant part of it. So in wearables domain, this is where we're gonna really shine. And instead of like having your uh, smart ring or wearables uh, watches last for a week or 10 days, now we can push the envelope to a month's time frame. So that's what we're trying to go now. We're trying to engage with different wearable companies that provide for smart rings and smart health trackers. So this is one of the things that we're really pushing through. We're also looking for the predictive maintenance modules, right? And that's by developing our own modules right, with some of the components provider. And then we can see that this is a very efficient way for asset tracking predictive maintenance that pushes um, the envelope of what the current platforms for these application domains can do, but not by one, including AI into it, in situ, instead of sending things to the cloud, and that's a new in that kind of domain. Two, you don't have to worry about the battery life because while you even get the AI, your battery can run much, much higher than what could possibly nowadays. So just a quick recap. So where we are pushing on the front, where we find like a lot of benefits. Drones is, I mean, the clear uh, case here because of the news that we have. We have the wearables and health uh, healthcare devices. We talk about predictive maintenance and the smart IoT infrastructure, consumer electronics, and we're going. Once that is established, we can push into hearing devices. Uh, I mean, uh, augmented reality. I mean, uh, smart uh, augmenting uh, VR glasses and so on. Right. Okay. So that that's a lot of 
ground to cover, right, for a small company. Um, so, well, so how how are you going about that right now? Just uh, just out of curiosity, it's it, because um, it's said so much, so many application areas. I mean, I'm not sure if you can see me. Like, I mean, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, I can see the blacks of my eyes. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. one, we go with very less sleep. But right. jokes aside, right? Um, I mean, I, I want to just establish something that while it sounds like it's a very short uh, duration for this company to achieve all of that, the technology, right, that's all of this has been uh, lay, uh, laid the ground for has been under development since 2018 and we have de-risked the technology so much right 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 now the chip is really and can be applied as a matter of fact we're going ahead for larger scale fabrication hoping to get them I mean, a larger batch of chips by january as we develop right I mean new um, chips and new application use cases so the thing that managed to help us push that front is the fact that when we designed the chip de-risked it and managed to make it I uh, mean, programmable and reusable in various application domains and to have always on, accept data from various sensors. So all of this was done on the technical side before the company was there. So yeah. right now it's all about the technology, uh, the marketing and commercial execution. And we have a great team right now who's trying to outreach with everyone with, with amazing connections. So that's the main secret sauce behind why we can achieve what we achieve in a such short period of time. Right, okay. Um, last question, Mohammed, and, and you touched on it already. Um, last question is around sort of milestones for the rest of this year, 2025. And we've got, what is it, four months left or so, um, and also 2026. Uh, and you just mentioned um, going into the fab, getting getting them, the chips manufactured. Uh, talk us through the milestones for the rest of this year and, and into next year. Yeah, sure. So um, let's start with, with things that's going to come up like I mean, fairly soon in the next like I mean, month or so. So we're developing a new evaluation board that uh, modular in nature, and that's in collaboration with some of the uh, top tier components provider. So it's going to be a much smaller in size than the board that we have right now. And you can allow it to have like I mean different modules for different application domains. And that will showcase it hopefully towards the end of the month in Netherlands and in Singapore in October as well. So that's one of the key milestones that allow us to have what we call already PUC that I mean other customers can use straight away on top of what we have right now. Then we we're going for um, given the pace of I um, mean adoption or interest by customers. Let's say not adoption but interest by customers. We're going ahead and fabricating a larger batch of the chips to be ready by January. And the main uh, improvement that we have there over the current chip is actually the footprint of the package. So it's going to be a much smaller package that will be making it naturally. Uh, uh, adoptable by all of these wearables and uh, health tracking devices. In the meantime, in parallel, we're, we're going to be I mean, walking on the working on like drone porting into real drones. Uh, we're doing also some similar analysis in different application domains, including the predictive maintenance and um, health biometric uh, signals, as well as we're developing a new chip. Right, this new chip it's gonna be not just with a, a better technology node. So we're going from 22 nanometer technology node to a 16, and going from 20 to 16, like it means a smaller chip, and a smaller chip means more efficient, um, and but the same with more functionality as well. And we're gonna have incorporate there uh, some of the wireless communication built in into the chip itself. So which means that if we have a system that requires communication, we don't need a two chip solution, but it's gonna be a one single integrated chip solution. And we are developing these wireless uh, protocols or the wireless module in this chip on, on our own. So we're not using any other uh, I mean, technology from, so, uh, from somewhere else. We are developing our own technology and we're doing some innovations in the um, semiconductor front as well. So that's on the technology side, right, what we're doing there. Uh, we are actively engaging a lot of uh, companies to sign POCs and, and develop, uh, I mean, co-develop boards and modules, right? Like similar to what we have done in March with we with Webit, um, including actually Webit is one of the uh, potential partners working with their newer uh, releases as well. And we're hoping that by uh, 2026, we would have what we call design ins, which means that potential customers, they want to take our chip and put it in their uh, product uh, line, right? So they wanted to test it first. And if that goes all well, so we can expect I mean orders towards Q the end of Q1 2026, we can have I mean like some sort of like signing up deals. But again, um, this is uh, what we're aiming for. So, uh, so we're pushing very hard to achieve that.
Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like you won't be getting much sleep next year either. So for the next uh, yeah. I mean, anyway. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Between 2025, 2026. I mean, no sleep, no rest. After that, we can see who to talk about that. <laughs> All right, Mohammed. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Always a pleasure talking to you.